No amount of weight loss is going to matter if our hearts aren't right. No amount of dieting is going to change us if we're so focused on a system that we forget to look at our hearts. This is why dieting doesn't work. It's a system designed to set you up for failure, to keep you coming back to that program, that book, that pill, those points time and time again. Because if you don't need the diet industry, then how will they survive? Hey friend, welcome to the Diet Haters Podcast. I'm your host, Sunday Joe, loser of 145 pounds, who's passionate about helping you learn how to stop dieting, find lasting weight loss results, and learn your true identity in Christ. We're gonna get real and raw and down to the nitty gritty in today's episode. In case you missed it, today's episode is titled Relationship, Religion, and Weight Loss Redemption. So what in the world does religion have to do with weight loss? My answer to that, is everything. So stick with me through the end and we will learn why together, okay? And I actually, I just, I had to throw that word redemption in there because the teacher in me like needed three R's, you know, I've got issues. I know I'm not in denial, but we're going to dive into some scripture together where Jesus was talking to the Pharisees and he was calling out their hardened hearts and how that compares to our own hearts as we pursue a deeper relationship with Jesus and pursue freedom in our health journey. So I've had people say to me, and they've totally meant it in a, in a complimentary manner, you're such a religious person, but I am usually pretty quick to remind them that I am not a fan of religion, but I sure do love Jesus. And sometimes that makes their head turn to the side and, and be like, okay, tell me more. And sometimes they look at me like I'm absolutely crazy and they walk away. Jesus wasn't a fan of religion either, right? But I say that to say that there really is a big difference in religion and relationship. Religion is, is full of rules. It's systematic. It strives for perfection. It's got a, a long list of do's and don'ts. A relationship, on the other hand, it's personal. And it can also be messy. You know, our relationship with those that we love can be messy. Our relationship with a job we love can, can get messy. Our, our relationship with food can get messy. Today, we're going to learn the difference and we're going to take more next right steps towards freedom in our health journey. Before we dive in though, I have just a quick favor to ask. If you are enjoying this podcast, would you mind going and sharing it with your friends and leaving a review? The more you share, the more opportunities for freedom, the more opportunities for health for others. And the more reviews we get, of course, preferably five star, the easier it is for us for others uh, to find this podcast. And so thank you in advance for listening. Thank you in advance for leaving a review. Thank you in advance for sharing. I really do appreciate it. All right. So now that I've said all that, let's dive into today's episode on relationship, religion, and weight loss redemption. So let's dig straight into the scriptures as we talk about this today. I'm actually going to be reading from uh, the New Living Translation. It says in Matthew 15, 8, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Now, it's important to note that Jesus here was speaking to the religious leaders. He was speaking to the Pharisees, speaking to the scribes, and they were trying to catch Jesus in a trap, accusing his disciples of ignoring the tradition of ceremonial hand washing before they ate. But Jesus, because he's awesome, was quick to turn it back around and say, and I'm summarizing here, say, your traditions, they violate God's own commandments, you know, the ones that you claim to follow. You know, you don't even honor your parents like God told you to. You're hypocrites. And then he goes on to preach scripture back to them out of Isaiah, saying he prophesied things about you. And so he takes, he speaks that Isaiah, it's from Isaiah 29, 13. He speaks it back to him. And he says, and so the Lord says, these people say they are mine. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And their worship for me, worship of me is nothing but man-made rules learned by rote. And so when I was reading this passage, I started to get all excited. And I was like, oh yeah, go get him, Jesus. You know, you tell him. But he was quick to remind me to check my own heart because religion can creep into our hearts faster than sneaking a bite of mac and cheese off our kids' plates when they're not looking. And religion brings rules. It brings rigidity. It, it's systems that we get so locked into that we refuse to change them. And here's something that we need to ask ourselves today. 
Is my walk with Jesus based on rules or is it based on a relationship with my loving Father? How we answer that question changes everything. It changes the way we see ourselves. It changes the way we love others. It changes the way we love ourselves. It changes the way we treat our bodies. It changes the way we eat. It can change our entire belief system. Now, I want to say that rules are not a bad thing, okay? Having systems in place is not a bad thing. But when we become so consumed by what we should and shouldn't do, so consumed by locking ourselves into the wrong systems, we don't leave room for freedom. We don't leave room for a true relationship with Jesus. When we set up so many rules for ourselves that we can't even see straight, we're setting ourselves up for failure. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to specifically relate this to weight loss for a minute, okay? How many of us have said things like this? I can't have sugar. I can't eat carbs. I can't eat that. I can't go out to eat. I'll just mess everything up. I can't treat myself to something nice today. I screwed up again this week and I certainly don't deserve anything good. I messed up again this week on my diet. Oh God, I'm such a failure. And then you go and you spend the next three days punishing yourself for being so stupid, right? Quote unquote stupid. Now, I could keep going, but I'm pretty sure you get the point. But what is tied to all of those statements? Broken systems. Rigid rules. Unrealistic expectations. Fear. And living in that place destroys our soul, which is our mind, our will, our emotions. It gives no room to need Jesus. It only sets us up to say, oh man, I can control all this by myself. I don't need any help, right? It sets us up for pride. We have to stop saying, I can't. Because every time we do, and then we we do something that we've convinced ourselves is bad or we're screw-ups, right? We leave no room for grace. We leave no room for mercy. No room for relationships. Just religion. So I want you to take some time today and I want you to ask yourself, are there warning signs in my life that I might be focusing on religion? Are there warning signs in my life that I might be focusing on religion? You know, maybe you're struggling to show the grace to others when they mess up. And if that is the case, I would bet you're certainly not showing yourself any grace either. Maybe you're struggling to have a deep connection with God. You know, maybe you're just talking at him and not talking with him. Maybe you're not talking at all and your heart, it's just gone cold. If our relationship with the God who created us is cold, well, guess what? Many of the choices that we make are going to come out of that reality. And if we're making choices about a relationship, I'm sorry, if we're making choices without a relationship with God, we're going to go back to what? Rigid rules, right? Do's and don'ts. A broken system. Here's the thing about God. He wants you to pursue him, not a list of right and wrongs, not a, not a list of mistakes and victories. He wants a deep personal relationship with you, with me, with us. And guess what comes with being in relationship? We literally have Holy Spirit leading us and helping us with our decisions. We have Holy Spirit saying to us, Hey, you know, that might not be the best idea for your body today. How about we choose something else? We have Holy Spirit saying, wow, you know, look what we accomplished together in that moment. Let's celebrate that victory together. Now, right and wrongs, they're not bad, right? Paying attention to mistakes and counting victories, they're not bad. But we have to do them with the right heart. We have to do them with a heart that is free and in relationship with Jesus, not a heart that is broken and scared and bitter and religious. Insert your own word there. Hey friend, just want to interrupt this episode real quick to remind you of something. That you are valuable. That you are worth fighting for. That you don't have to allow your past to control you any longer. And to remind you that you don't have to keep walking in the never-ending cycle of dieting. Sometimes all it takes to get back on track in our health journeys is literally going back to the basics. Back to simple next right steps that lead us to the best version of ourselves. The version God designed us to be. If I can lose 145 pounds, you can lose weight too, my friend. Doesn't matter if it's 10, 20, 50, 100, or more. If I can do it, you can do it. I've created a free guide just for you called Four Simple Steps to Weight Loss to help you on your weight loss journey. 
In this free guide, you're going to learn the four simple steps that will get you started on your journey without giving in to the diet mentality. Now, here's what I won't promise will happen. I won't promise you're going to lose 30 pounds in 30 days. I won't tell you that if you take a magic pill, you're going to burn fat in your sleep. I won't tell you that you'll lose all the weight you need to lose if I mix up this magic formula for you to drink three times a day. Now, here's what I promise will happen. If you follow these four simple steps, you will see results. And following these steps, they won't always be easy, but they are simple. I'm rooting for you, friend. And if you are ready to take control of your health today and say goodbye to dieting once and for all, you can download my free guide, Four Simple Steps to Weight Loss, today at sundayjoe.com slash four steps. That's sundayjoe.com slash the number four steps. And don't worry, if you're driving or cutting grapes to add to the chicken salad and can't write the link down, I will share it in the show notes. And now, back to the show. If you find yourself saying, yeah, you know, I'm just, I'm not in a good spot today. Guess what? That doesn't make you a bad person. It makes you human. But recognize it is the first step towards victory. And now that you've recognized it, it's time to take the next right step towards getting free. And only Jesus can set you free, my friend. I want to encourage you to sit with him, to get quiet, to talk to him, to tell him you're, tell him you're in a weird spot. Tell him you don't want to live in the despair of all the rules and the religion that you've trapped yourself in. Ask him how to climb out of that pit. And guess what? He's going to show you. As I, I prepared for this episode, I I had to do the same thing. And I needed to ask God to forgive me for, for living out religion more than relationship with him. Because guess what? None of us are immune to it. And here's the thing about religion. It brings shame. It says, you know, you didn't follow this checklist. You're not perfect. Guess what? God's not pleased with you. You're a failure. But it isn't really religion saying that, is it? No, it's the enemy. Satan himself whispering lies into our minds that eventually settle in our hearts. But here's what I want you to know about religion. Religion isn't just a word. Religion isn't just a feeling. Religion is an evil spirit set out to destroy our lives and the lives of those around us. The spirit of religion is controlling churches every day. It's literally controlling the body of Christ. And guess what? Because of that, our churches are full of people in bondage when they, when we should be the ones going out and setting others free, just as Jesus did. If the enemy can't keep us from salvation, he's certainly going to try to keep us from being effective for the kingdom. And when we're so overcome by all the things that we have to get right, we don't focus on relationship. The Pharisees and the the Sadducees, they were constantly being called out by Jesus for their words. And their hearts were not in the right place. And guess what? Their mouths showed it. What came out of their mouths showed it. So how are you doing with that today, my friend? What does your mouth say about your heart? Are you constantly berating yourself? Are you sitting in shame each day because you've screwed up too many times? Are you saying all the right things, but but when you get to that quiet place, you talk about yourself in disgust? Your system, my friend, is broken. And it's time to stop believing the lies the enemy is telling you. And it's time to choose God's truth. The truth that you are his beloved. That he chose you. That he loves you with an everlasting love. That he's never going to leave you. That you are a princess of the Most High God. I actually talk about this a little bit more in an episode, a previous episode called How to Find Your Value. And I I don't remember what episode it is, but I will share the link in the show notes for that for you. But the religious leaders, they made sure to prioritize the rules in public, but they lacked relationship in their hearts. They showed up in all the right outfits. They said the right things. They ate the right foods, but their hearts were dark and their systems were broken. And Jesus came to destroy the system. We have to let him destroy the broken systems that we've set up for ourselves so we can be free. 
And it's, it's so easy for us to convince ourselves that we have to look a certain way because others are watching us, you know, or maybe you're the soccer mom after all, right? You, you're supposed to be organized and you're supposed to smile or, you know, you were the cheerleader in high school, so you have to continue to smile, apply your makeup perfectly and have your crap together. Maybe you're singing worship at church week after week, so you've got to smile when you sing. You've got to take all the right steps on the stage. You've got to hold your hands a certain way. You've got to perform the way they want you to perform. But when you get behind closed doors, you are a total mess. I've been there. I've done it. You know, you, you eat a salad in public because it's the right thing to do, but, but then you go home and you gorge where nobody can see you. And my prayer, and that is forgive us, Father, for living this way. The world has taught us to perform, but Jesus has taught us the opposite. We have to decide which system we're going to follow. We have to stop focusing on the rules that we've allowed others to set for us and the rules that we've set for ourselves that are destroying us. We have to shift our focus to relationship with the only one who can set us free or we're always going to be in bondage. No amount of weight loss is going to matter if our hearts aren't right. No amount of dieting is going to change us if we're so focused on a system that we forget to look at our hearts. And this is why dieting doesn't work. Because it's a system designed to set you up for failure to keep you coming back to that program, that book, that pill, those points time and time again. Because if you don't need the diet industry, how are they going to survive? Think about that for a minute. But choosing a relationship with Jesus changes everything. Relationship says, I'm in this with you, Jesus, and I know you're in it with me. And man, I can't do this life without you. Help me. Two of the most powerful words you can ever say. Help me. Walk with me. Show me why I do the things I do. Help me pull up the root behind emotional eating. Open my eyes to something new. We have to choose today, my friend. Not tomorrow. Not next week. Not on Monday when we want to start another diet. Today. Today we choose relationship over religion. Today we choose grace over condemnation. Today we choose truth over the lies. Today we choose love over hate. Today is the day, my friend, and I am in this with you. And if you want some extra encouragement on your journey, I would love for you to join us over in our Diet Haters Facebook community. Free to join. If you're tired of doing life alone, you're you're tired of being on your weight loss journey by yourself, come on over and join us. We're encouraging one another over there, sharing inspiration, praying with each other. And of course, because you know me and I'm the queen of shenanigans, we're laughing along the way too. I will share the link in the show notes for you. You can head on over again, join us, or you can just search Diet Haters on Facebook and you will find us that way too. All right, my friend, that is it for me today. I will see you in the next episode of the Diet Haters podcast. And don't forget, you are valuable.